Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the thriller, crime and comedy movie titled, The First Great Train Robbery. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 1855 the UK and France were at war with Russia and Crimea. The English troops were paid in gold. Once a month 25,000 pounds in gold was taken from the London Bank of Huddleston and Bradford to the rail station by armed guards that followed no fixed route or timetable. The gold strongboxes were placed in specially built, three-quarters inch, tempered steel safes, with two locks requiring four keys. Two keys were entrusted by the railway dispatcher, locked in his office, a third key was entrusted to the president of the Huddleston and Bradford Bank, and the last one entrusted to the manager of the same bank. This amount of gold in one place naturally aroused the interest of English criminals, but in 1855 there had never been a robbery from a moving train. We see a train, and suddenly in the luggage van, a man attacks the guard, but is quickly thrown off the train. Soon after, a man called Edward inspects the attacker in the grass, and inside the carriage a woman called Miriam asks him if the man was dead, and he confirms it. Later, the manager of the Huddleston and Bradford Bank called Henry informs a group of gentlemen that it was a one-man attempt, doomed to fail, and that the guy died instantly, having been thrown off the train at full speed. Edward suddenly rises, asking Henry if there was any risk the villain would steal the gold. Henry tells him it's utterly impossible, requiring four keys, of which he has one that he has around his neck at all times, even while bathing. Edward says thank God for that. Later, Miriam asks him who those men think he is, and Edward replies it's not entirely clear, but that it seems he made a great deal of money and coal in the north. She asks if he has, and Edward says oh yes he has, that he's quite well off. Miriam asks if they believe all that, and asks if they know he likes theater. Edward says an unmarried man must amuse himself. She asks, is that so, and starts closing in on him in bed, and they start kissing. Next, a man called Agar and some other men start walking after a woman, and create a distraction to rob her. Seconds later, Edward appears, and Agar asks if he's any job for him, to which Edward replies he has. Agar then asks what kind of keys he wants copied, but Edward says they need to get them first. Next up, they follow the president of the Huddleston and Bradford Bank called Trent to learn of his routines, and start planning on how to get into his house and figure out where his key to the train safe is. Edward goes to a game of ratting where Trent goes with his dog to gamble. After having lost money, Trent sits down in a nearby room, and Edward goes to join him, starting a chit-chat. They connect, and Edward paints a picture of himself as a great man, but has never married, something he'd like to do. Next up, Edward has been invited to Trent's house, and he is introduced to their daughter. Edward shows great interest in her and her interests, and the two start talking about, well, peculiar things. Trent remarks he indeed has his charm. Later, Miriam asks an awful lot of questions about Trent's daughter, seeming a bit jealous he's courting another girl. Next, as Edward and Trent's daughter are talking, Edward has led the conversation towards talking about her father, and she reveals her father never drinks at nightfall. However, she adds that sometimes, often the nights before the gold shipments, he acts weird and goes alone down to the wine cellars, saying she thinks he breaks his own regulation. The following night, Miriam sounds the doorbell, and Trent's servant comes out to ask what he can do for her, and Edward and Agar sneak in. Inside, they are playing piano, and Agar tries picking the lock to the basement. He finally does, and the two continue down into the wine cellar, starting to look for the key. Suddenly, Agar sneezes loudly, and one of the women hears it. She asks their servant to go check the cellar. Edward and Agar get scared, but then suddenly Trent is heard calling for the servant and he leaves before checking. They continue, and suddenly Edward finds a key, and Agar immediately begins copying it, after which they sneak back out. One key down. Next, Edward is talking with Henry, the bank manager, about women. Suddenly Miriam appears in the hall, and Edward remarks that that girl gives good value, and Henry is surprised he knows her. Henry says she's perfect, and Edward comments he doesn't think she's his type. Henry gets irritated, saying she's exactly his type and asks Edward to introduce him to her. Later, Miriam is angry at Edward for proposing such a plan, having to go through with it with that pig, but Edward tells her it's up to her if she wants to do it. Next, Edward and Henry arrive at a certain type of house, and Edward asks the supposed owner if Henry could meet Madame Lucienne, and Henry is shown to her. He's pointed to the room, after which Agar runs. Suddenly, Madame Lucienne, aka Miriam, appears. She starts undressing him and he acts nervous. She tells him he doesn't have to be nervous and continues, saying they have to remove everything to feel flesh against flesh, taking off the key, and putting it where Agar can reach it. Henry asks if she's not gonna take off her clothes, 
and she unwilling starts to undress slowly as well. Suddenly a strong whistle is heard, and she exclaims it's the police. Henry gets nervous, and Edward appears, telling Henry to hurry and run. Two keys down. Next, Agar remarks they have been there three days, and it's impossible to get past those crushers, get up those stairs and into the office, everybody can see him. Agar inquires why the keys are important, asking if he doesn't trust him with the whole plan. Edward remarks he doesn't trust him at all, and Agar says good. But then, connecting the bank and the railway, Agar figures out he's after the Crimean gold, and starts exclaiming oh mother of god, that's 25,000 quid. Edward interrupts him, asking if he's ready to go up there, which he is. Edward goes to Miriam, nodding to different people. Suddenly a boy Edward looks at robs a woman, and Edward and Agar start running after the boy, yelling to stop that thief. They run up into the office, and Agar immediately starts trying to get the keys while Edward knocks people unconscious. Edward notices a window in the roof, and thanks everybody for their job. Agar tells Edward he didn't wax any of the keys, that it's impossible, but Edward remarks they haven't tried at night. During the following three nights, Agar watches the railway guard's routines, and notes that every night at about 2.30 am, the guard leaves his post for 75 seconds to go and relieve himself from his bottle of beer, a very regular bloke. As Agar tells Edward 75 seconds is too short to copy two keys, Edward asks if he could do it if they prepare by climbing in from the roof and picking the locks for him. Agar remarks only Willie can climb that, but that he's unfortunately in Newgate. Next up, Edward goes to visit a woman, asking if she's the one who knows Willie, and goes to visit him from time to time. She confirms she does, and Edward pays her to deliver a message to Willie, that he should break out at the next topping, or otherwise he's not clean Willie, and that he should go to the house where he first met John Sims. Agar comments Willie will never make it, but Edward says he's optimistic. Inside the prison, Willie is seen hiding, and then running up and starts climbing one of the walls. Slowly he makes his way to the top, and at the top, Willie jumps, starting to make his way across. A guard appears below, and he quickly gets over it. He makes his way across rooftops, getting to the house, and they start tending to his wounds. During the following days, Edward times Agar as he practices to run up the stairs to wax the keys. After many trials, Agar suddenly makes it in 74 seconds, and Agar remarks tired he always knew he could do it. The next night, Willie is climbing the railway station building. He gets to the roof, and climbs down to the office, all while Edward and Agar are waiting. Willie climbs inside, sneaks to the door and key cabinet and unlocks them. Willie starts waiting for Agar to come, when suddenly the door opens itself. Edward and Agar get scared the guard will notice. Suddenly, someone yells the guard's name and Willie notices, closing the door. Their moment arrives, and Agar gets ready, and suddenly he goes. Agar runs up, he gets to the keys, starting to wax them, all while Willie counts the time for him. As Willie counts to 70 seconds, Agar is finished and runs down and hides right in time. All four keys down. Next day, Edward gets a shave, and later that night, he has summoned the guard of the luggage van from the railway company. Without the guard seeing him, Edward introduces himself as Mr. Sims, and bribes him to look the other way the next day. The next day, Agar arrives, pretending to be a carer for a monkey, and so gets to be in the luggage van. During the ride, he tests the keys, and they all work, and the guard is impressed. Later, Edward explains to Miriam the next gold shipment is in a week, and once they have done it, they will go to Paris. Meanwhile somewhere else, the police have caught Willie stealing a lady's purse, threatening to put him in prison if he doesn't tell them who the mysterious Mr. Sims is, asking Willie to message Mr. Sims to meet him at the New Year's party. Next up, Edward arrives at the New Year's party, walking up to Willie, but as they start talking, Edward sees Willie sweating, asking if he's turned on them. Willie swears he's not, but Edward suspects he has and leaves. Cops start following him, but Edward, the master cracksman he is, easily eludes capture. At the same time, Agar sees police leading Willie away, who manages to escape. Not long after, Edward finds Willie in a bar somewhere, and Willie starts running to escape him. He runs through the streets, and eventually arrives at a house. But as he takes a break, a man appears, strangling him to death. The day before the gold shipment, a Mr. Sharp tells a man from the authorities that since they now suspect a robbery might be attempted, they have increased security, and will lock the luggage van during the transport as well as inspect all containers large enough to carry a man. Agar overhears it, explaining the changes for Edward, that it will be impossible now. Edward sits quietly for a while, and then asks him to find a dead cat. The next day, Miriam is crying on the platform, saying the other guard told her they have to open her brother's coffin, and the guard says they of course shouldn't. 
She explains her brother was afraid of being buried alive, why the coffin has a bell on it. The guard walks up to his colleague, asking if he can smell the rot, saying they can make an exception in this case. Suddenly their boss comes, saying they must open the coffin no matter what. But suddenly, the bell rings, and Miriam screams that her brother lives. She yells she knew he didn't die of cholera, and the guards get worried. They open, but they immediately close it as they see her dead brother. A guard helps her up, saying it must have been the wind or something accidentally ringing the bell. They carry the coffin inside, after which they close and lock the luggage van. Edward meets Miriam, and Miriam asks if he really can climb, which he says he can. Suddenly they meet Henry, and to not be hindered, Edward tells him Miss Lawson here is accompanying her deceased brother and is seeking a compartment, saying he's made other arrangements himself. Henry says she can join him in his compartment, and Edward says he's too kind. As the train leaves the platform, Agar starts yelling to the guard to open up, and he quickly helps him out. While Miss Lawson, aka Miriam, is having a chit-chat with Henry, Agar is bringing out the gold. The guard asks how they will get the gold out since the van is locked, and Agar says his colleague will open it from the outside, to which the guard remarks they're insane. Edward climbs out of his compartment, onto the roof, making his way towards the luggage van. He ducks for all the bridges they pass, and a couple minutes later, as Agar has loaded the safe with all the lead, Edward reaches their van. Edward drops down two ropes for the inside, with which to hold him while he picks the lock. While Edward is struggling to get the lock open, Henry suddenly tells Miriam he recognizes her from somewhere, but she says he must have confused her with somebody else. Edward unlocks it, and gets in, saying he needs Agar's clothes when he gets off later since he's got totally covered in soot. Agar exclaims bloody hell since he has to strip bloody naked. They then throw the bags with gold to someone waiting to pick it up, who will meet them later in Folkestone. Agar hands over his clothes, and they help Edward up. Edward tries his best to run back quickly to his compartment before they reach the next station. Edward gets back just in time, closing the window, and holding the door. Meanwhile, Agar gets back into the coffin. After leaving the station, Edward changes clothes. In the compartment with Henry and Miriam, Miriam is telling a story about a naughty man she met once, and suddenly Henry jumps over her and starts trying to kiss her, but she eventually pushes him away. Edward meanwhile tries to clean his face from soot. They arrive at their destination, and Miriam follows as Agar is carried out. Henry remarks she's an impossible woman, and hands the guards the four keys. Seeing the safe full, Henry comments a robbery is also impossible. Edward gets off, walking out of the train station. Miriam waits for him on a cart with Agar, but suddenly, Mr. Sharp recognizes Edward from the New Year's party, and arrests him. Miriam rides away with Agar, and Edward is taken away. In a courtroom some time later, Edward is asked why he planned and performed this scandalous crime. Edward simply replies he wanted the money, and people start laughing in the room. Mr. Sharp remarks he'll get 20 years for that, and Edward is led away. Outside, people cheer as Henry is brought out, and Miriam jumps out kissing him. She gives him a key, and he unlocks his handcuffs, knocking down the cops, and yells at Agar, asking what the hell he's waiting for. The two then ride away, managing to escape, and people just continue to cheer. The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.